Are you ready? We are live on the mic huh. with our host DJ Deuce and Bamboo Bam. 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 Let's get this show started. Yo, what's up? It's Friday night and we're live on the mic. I'm your host DJ yep. Deuce, my co-host Bamboo. What's up, Bam? What up? What up? What's good? I I'm happy. It's Friday. We're there killing me all week. I'm it happy. Is. There I'm even is. happier because today I have, I'm a fan today. Mm -hmm. Got okay. a guest on. You fanboying it up? Yes, I am actually. I am. All right, yeah. all right. This is she's a badass. She's a badass. Then trust me on Instagram, follow her. She's a badass today. Okay. Let's not make her wait. Let's get her on. Shannon Hall, aka Dallas from the American Gladiator. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Great. Right, hurry on. Good, oh good, man, good. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Damn, I'm telling you. Yep, yeah. And That's it was your birthday. Do. It was your birthday not too long ago. Happy birthday. Oh, my birthday. Uh, happy birthday. Yeah, baby. 52. Boom. 52. I was going to make you guess your age. 52. And she can still whoop our asses combined. This definitely, is definitely. I am fighters every day still. That's my fountain. God, God damn. You know, I, I just, you know what I mean? Like, as I, I, I when I was younger, I'd be arrogant, but being a little older, you just know that a woman like you would kick my ass. I just know. So now we I don't even talk to you. No. You're a good boy, so. Of course, of course, ma'am, of course. <laughs> now, I, Shannon, I want to get right into it. I right. want to know, you, you know, before you were an American Gladiator, you obviously trained. So when did this all start for you? Oh, man. Um, well, I'm from Arkansas originally, and so I grew up. Raising horses, breaking horses, beating up boys in the yard. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we were single mama families, just poor as shit. All we did for fun is beat each other up in the yard. <laughs> okay. She okay. was an American gladiator before she knew it. Mm -hmm. I, I knocked out my first guy when I was five years old when he said my mom was a slut in the yard. Mm -hmm. and I just, something happened and boom, knocked him straight mm -hmm. out for all the kids. And I, I felt the power. <laughs> okay. okay. I, I was just like, holy shit, I can kick <clears throat> So I knew that I could kick ass then, but the weights, are you talking about actually weight training or what mm. type of training are you talking about exactly? I, I, both. I want to know mm. both. When did things start? Like, what? how did everything, how'd you get into any type of training? Well, uh, my my background is a gymnast. So I started gymnastics um, a little bit later, I guess in middle school. And that was with the tumbling. And then that we worked out um, with the weights, with the football team and stuff like that. So I started edging into the weight room. Okay. Uh, I was so skinny. I was just this like tall, skinny thing. And, um, you know, she's like, if you're going to want to flip over, you're going to have to put some muscle on the <laughs> leg, little girl. You're fast, but you got to push all your weight. So right. I started hitting that leg press and um, I've been leg pressing ever since, you know, so mm. that was my weights. And um, I did that through, uh, let's see, through college. I was dating um, a guy at Arkansas State and he's on the football team. And so we started training together, and then he really pushed me to strength training and getting under some serious weight because you know he knew how to train it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I realized I was really freaking strong. So he's okay. like, I didn't look, and I was skinny, but he's like, you are so strong, pound for pound, baby. He goes, you're pound for pound the strongest girl I've ever dated. And this guy dated a lot of girls. You do not <laughs> fuck with country people. That's just facts. <laughs> it's, the, it's in the food. It's in the food, man. Man, that's right. That good living, fresh air, you know, good water, and Fish caught right out of the pond, you know. We cook them. See, see right when I get into a fight, I'm like, "Where are you from?" And then I do that. That's when I decide, you know. <laughs> <laughs> City boy, I got you. I got you. The country gate. I'm like, never mind. I'm out of no, this one. I ain't fucking with so you. So, is it true? Looking you up, that uh, before you became an American Gladiator, you actually tried out for the show. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. So uh, I just want to. What's a tryout, by the way? Go. Let's go through a tryout. For the show. Okay, so I just did a bodybuilding show in Dallas, Texas. I moved there with my at the time boyfriend, um, and I did a bodybuilding show there because it was you know kind of really coming up. But, you know the girls look good. This is before they knew that you know it would kill you later. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. do all this stuff and work out. And anyway, so um, I did a bodybuilding show, and my coaches and my uh, best friend, we just finished the show. I got second place in the heavyweight show in Dallas, and um, we're like, hey, let's go to Houston. Let's go party. Let's get out of town. So. We were eating pizza in the car. We were smoking pot. We were wasted. You know, it was after the competition. We all had been doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. right. This was 27 years ago. Pot was not laced with everything. It was like just <laughs> pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, smoking pot, drinking beer in the car was not driving. So I was, you know, you know, 
getting off the show and not know what's going on. So mm-hmm. we passed um, a sign that said American Gladiator tryouts on the side of the road. And they're like, shit, oh. go get it, shit. And I was like, yeah, let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> yes. I was car over and I was just like, couldn't even see, right? I'm just like, where, where, who do I hit? What do we do, you know? So the tryout consisted of, and I, I was drunk and high, okay? So <laughs> and it was a remote. It was like, let's just do this for fun, right? Yeah. So um, they basically pushed me out there to the field. So anyway, um, I remember doing 100-yard dash. I remember um, we had enough hanging skills, and I had to climb uh, monkey bars, and I had to do pull-ups and hold myself up. And um, then they had the um, the Powerball pod set up at the end. Oh, so they had to make sure that we could do agility stuff, you know, because a lot of bodybuilders – you know, you can go front to back, but left and right, your knees go out. You know, right, that's right. ACLs, it happens all the time. So, but I was a runner and gymnast, and so I do crazy shit. And so I was able to go agile and juke and all that kind of stuff. And I remember I was going against Victoria Gay, and she later became jazz on the show. Okay. okay. She was also trying out for a contender. So they put, they like, look at these two big <laughs> white girls. Here's the black girl. Let's get everybody like, oh, crazy. <laughs> and so me and her were like, come on, motherfucker. And so it was me and her and Powerball. We had the best time and just going crazy. So, um, and, you know, you tried it out and they're like, okay, thank you. And I don't really remember what happened after that. I might have passed out. I don't know. <laughs> um, all I remember is like three weeks later, they called back and said, Shannon, you got top 10 out of 950 girls. And wow. come be on the show. And I'm like, what show? Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Shit, I was high, dog. Dude, I, forgot. I, I thought it was a dream. I thought it was like it's just all a dream. Hey, I was like, oh, you know. So, um, and they were like, "Are you serious?" And got on the plane, and my life's never been the same since. I was there actually as a contender. Yes. So mm-hmm. I got there, and I was, um, uh, I saw the gladiators, you know, I saw Zap and Ice. You know, these were like my idols. I'm just like, dude, this is Zap and Ice. I was like, I'm like country stupid. Okay, I'm just getting out there. I'm just country stupid. <laughs> fan of everybody and so I'm like okay so we started scrimmaging the gladiators before the show because I just want to make sure that everybody knows what the games are and of course have, you know a little bit of experience but I got on there and I started I remember tug of war and I was yanking everybody off and on the gun I was knocking everybody over and on the job so I was just like bam bam beating the shit out of everybody and so the producer called and he's like um you know, send Shannon to the studio up here we need to talk to her and she's fucking people <laughs> And the we need to tone it down. Yeah, and I think it was Brian Kadinsky, I think, at the time. He's like, look, he goes, we can't have you beating up all the gladiators. I'm like, it's $25,000 if I do. What are you talking about? They're like, we have a better idea. Oh. We want to know if you would like to uh, be a new gladiator on the TV show. And I'm just like, what? All right. All right. I said, yeah, we're going to call you Dallas because nobody knows or cares what your name is, but they know your accent that you're from Texas. Fair so, enough. Hey, Dallas, hey, Dallas. And I'm just like, Dude, do I get paid for this? Like, yes, you get paid a lot more for this. I'm like, Wee! wow. That's how You're super happened. one. Wow. That's how it happened. So then they had the starting gladiators, and uh, I was put on as an alternate the first year, and and then you know they cut the girls down from six to five, and I was right there at the doorstep again, and oh, and so I was wow. alternate. I got to do a few shows, um, but I was doing a live tour, and and you know I was the grunt, so they stuck me up against jousting guys and guy DJs, and but what they did put me all through this grunt stuff. They made me tough as shit. And I came mm. out at the end and I was just like snarling bullets, baby. I'm like, Rah! so they made me great. Let me tell you, these girls on the show, they are my best friends and my sisters. And they, if it wasn't for them, I just wouldn't be anything that I am now. I mean, just yesterday, you know, uh, Ice, that's Lori, she's called. She said, I heard a song that we used to listen to. And, you know, she, we're real <laughs> spiritual people. And she goes, I got a vibe I needed to call you. You doing all right? What's going on with you, girl? So, I mean, we're all like. That's cool, so cool. That was one of my questions. Like, there was, like, the jealousy amongst each other. There wasn't any? Um, yeah, no, there was. Just in the family, you know? There's well, yeah, both. yeah. Like, you know, sometimes me and Bam get jealous of each other because I'm so much better at him and everything. But it happens, like. <laughs> no? no? Yeah. We don't want to get it. That's a whole other episode. No, Anyways, no. we are still friends, but I get it. But, like, I just find, like, because you guys are technically competing, so there's always that little bit of you know that competitive edge rivalry, amongst rivalry. athletes. Exactly. No, we no, we got that, that and we still do. We but, but the deal is the way we have so much love for each other. You know, we've gone through this show that was the number one in the world, and we had this experience that like nobody's had but just a handful of people. And 
we do that, but then it pushes us to be better. So if I see somebody else, you have to do the jazz three more times. I'm going to that fucking gym and I'm doing bench press all night long. Yes. Yeah, but, but we are all like that. We all make right. each other better. And we get, you know, we get catty a little bit mad here, but yeah, but man, you know, I remember Victoria, she would walk down there and she'd got a gladiator before I did because they needed a, a part for her to fill before me. There was like way too many white girls. So I got like pushed all the way to the end. They're like, Oh, here's this beautiful, badass black goddess. I'm like, God damn it. Damn it. <laughs> you know, it's like Victoria's like, congratulations. You know, she walked by, and, you know, she had these giant hamstrings, this ass and hamstring. I'm like, fuck, I want to ass like that. I'm just like, fuck you, bitch. I'm going in there and nothing springs. So, and then it's it's all out of admiration. It's all out of admiration and respect. And, you know, you may get mad, but um, we all love each other. And I, so you know, cool. me and a couple of the guys are, are like this just because just over petty. Yeah. Yeah, we know all it's about that. Petty, but all in the same, we're all the same family, and all of us got each other's back at the end. Even though we may talk shit, it's that's just normal shit, you know. Yeah, okay, okay, did, okay. Did the we're, men, that close. we're that close with each other. Did it's the like, men look at you girls differently? What's that? Did the men treat you any differently? We beat their asses. What are you talking about? Big pinks in your pussies. You know, we're the ones that look badasses, and they're just like. We look so good in our uniform. You know, we're just. So you know shy. what? Now that I'm thinking yeah. about it, it's true. They were more the divas than the actual women. This is facts. Mm. Yeah, we're, we're, we're scratching and clumping, but, but I tell you, these guys have hearts of gold, and they are. I think one one thing I can say about the gladiators is that we've all, um, everybody, you know, we love the kids, and you know, we have everybody's best interests at heart. And I don't know of any real people that are. are bad natured or you know yeah. assholes like that i mean um that was the character that they played like nitro nitro was supposed to be an asshole because it was nitro mm -hmm. he had the biggest heart and would do anything for anybody and that, our hearts are huge and so there may be some character flaws or you know i mean I'm, i may talk shit or whatever but we all at the end of the day would do the right thing and do the right thing for each other so that's awesome mm -hmm. now hold on yeah. oh I, I just wanted to know yeah you, you you end up on a show, now you're on television. What was going through your mind? Dude, I was on an adrenaline rush the mm -hmm. whole time. So nothing went through my mind. I was like, talk about you know, being high. I was naturally <laughs> high all the time. So it was like my feet never hit the ground when wow. I was wow. on the show. It never, it never hit the ground. So you don't have time to think it's, it's an adrenaline. Well, for me it was, so I didn't stress about anything. I didn't really right. get into the petty shit because I was just glad to be there. I'm like, holy fucking shit. I'm all these incredible people. So my joy of just being, I was so elated and so grateful and gratitude just pouring out of me because it's the best thing that ever happened to this country girl. Best thing okay. that ever happened to me. I've never seen lights so bright. I've never seen, People screaming my name, wanting autographs and stuff when we go places. I can't tell you what that does for somebody yeah. that's mm -hmm. never had it. So it's like I, you, you're, I can't even. You can't feel anything, you know. I agree. Okay, okay. No. You're just like, it's just fantastic. I can't even explain it. It's, it's still that way. It's still that way for me. Now yeah. the show. What do they now? Like when you go out there, like do they tell you really like knock them on their ass? Is oh, this... Yeah, they say if you don't knock them on their ass, we got somebody waiting to get in your uniform oh, with a different name on it. God. You want to do that and do that, but if not, you better get out there and you better kill them. Oh my god! <laughs> so like you know, somebody, somebody's got another uniform over here with their name on it. If you don't knock yeah, them, oh, that's intense. Mm. And so we're like, we're slapping each other back. Like, let's go. I mean, we are going crazy back Jesus here. Christ. Oh, Alex, oh. we have a listener. Alex is a good friend of the show. He's asking, what was your least favorite Gladiator game? Uh, oh, oh, least favorite? Um, there was a game called Sky Track, and it was where you had to go upside down, oh. and it was Velcro on our hands, mm. like little rats on a ceiling, and we had to like go backwards and upside down, and like like these little things were holding us, and it, I didn't, I did not like that, but Skytrack, and you may not have heard it because it sucks. So. <laughs> now, but, we'll flip yeah. the question. Favorite, your favorite game? Dallas, baby. Boom! I'm a hitter, yeah. quitter. I got that one hitter, quitter. <laughs> I just love that. You know, when the jousting hit your helmet, I mean, 
bong, bong. I mean, it really rocks you. And because of that game is why I became such a good boxer. And I'm telling you why. When they taught us how to do the jowls, so it's a yeah. military thing, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a sergeant, a couple of sergeants from California from some base over there, and they'd bring the pugil sticks, so they trained us how to do this. So when you jowls, you're like, you know, you know, your whole hips go into it, yeah. this, this, that, and this. And I tell you, for doing that for three years with a thing that weighed 15 pounds, when I put a pair of 14-ounce boxing gloves on, bing, 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 my hands were fucking like lead, super-duper fast lead bullets. And that is from the jowl. So I still, when I punch everything, it's all it's all the same, right? Wow. But like a thousand miles an hour because that's that jowl, I'm telling you, but I've got my bell ring and I've seen the white light. <laughs> Have you guys uh, do you guys remember Wesley, Two Scoops Berry, Wesley Berry? Y'all y'all remember Two Scoops, the grand champion of all grand champion of the guys that won on the Gladiator show. He went to yes, that. yes, yes. I do remember Wesley Two Scoops. He's yes. a dear, dear friend of mine. And Wesley and I, he was the guy that I was sparring, right? And Wesley's uh like a world speed track athlete, super fast. We have the best contenders on there. But anyway, oh, yeah. Wesley's like, Come on, Dallas, let's go, Dallas. I'm like, shut up, because we were like rooming together. We were getting like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, but man, he's so fast. I remember he hit me so hard. That's the first time. I've ever seen like the white light and got my bell room. But after somebody does that to you once or twice, woo, come on, motherfucker. I didn't oh, die. My. Now there I'm you go. that shit. So he was such a good training partner. <clears throat> just, just like that. That man, when you put people like that that are that athletic and yeah. Man, mm -hmm. I, I just got chills all over. I miss it. So I can't even tell you how I miss So that. you're telling me what would make ninety nine percent of the people quit motivated you was the white light with the hit. <laughs> because you know if you can take that because you know everybody's afraid you know, of something that the girls are afraid of us because they're so big but once you've crossed that and this is a great life lesson too once you have faced your fear and you've crossed that line mm. you're still breathing and you're still alive woof, it mm -hmm. builds your character and it builds your confidence like like nothing before so yeah. every fearful thing that we've all walked through, yeah. it made us stronger and stronger and stronger and on a spiritual and emotional level, you know, so all right. I know what I can take and what I can't. So. <laughs> so you're talking, it made me think of something. Now you got a lot of contestants. Have you crushed somebody's just, just crushed them, just broke them down after you just demolished them. Like just, they went home crying, you know? No, how many, no, how many no, people? no. If I, you know why? Because if I've knocked the shit, well, I remember, okay, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hold on a sec. Okay, wait. Because, uh, like, here, like, when we do stuff, if we if we beat somebody or beat a contender, I am a really good sport. I'll say, fuck, man, good job. But when I got flown to Japan and I did Bam Bam Gladiators in Japan, um, there was this Japanese girl that, I, and I was on the jowls. You know, I was like, you are so small, you're going to go fly. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's, I, I knew she was, I knew it was gonna be like, ding. I just knew what was gonna happen. Oh my so I, gotta, I was like, girl, you better hold on. And so they're like, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm just like, show me the light and I'll start hitting somebody because I couldn't understand shit. So I, this girl, she was like talking all this shit to me or whatever. And I was just like, and I, she said, like, something like, I swear I heard fuck USA. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she spoke, spoke and like, I was like, fuck USA. I said, I <laughs> There's no other Americans there. They're like, yeah. fuck USA. In my head, I heard fuck USA. I you heard what you wanted to hear. You know that. Right? Okay, I did, and I knocked her over there, and I was like, fuck Japan, and I forgot <laughs> who I was. So I said, fuck, <laughs> Japan, fuck you, and I was like, okay, hey, it's all part of the show. Uh -huh, yeah. That's the only time that I got mad when she said fuck USA. Or wow. fuck I remember what it was. You don't, you don't go against this motherfucker, okay? Come on now. Mm -hmm. So... The so one time, and she did, and she goes, bing, all the way over, and she fell down. I was like, Japan, fuck Japan. I got, yeah, so they didn't ask me to go back. They didn't ask me to go back. Okay. <laughs> so, get the crazy lady back in the U.S. She's, like, oh, she's, like, she's, like, she's baseballing her, her, her <laughs> attendance over there. Oh, yeah. Stays in Tokyo, okay? So. True enough, true enough. Mm. Have you ever been injured on the show? Um, yes. Um, mm. That's where I tore my ACL. So um, I was doing breakthrough. I was uh, the one that was guarding the, the touchdown thing, the breakthrough stuff. Mm -hmm. And the rules are when the contender has the football and they're, I might have misunderstood. I thought when their knee touched, I thought when their hand touched. Okay, that's oh. what it was. 
I thought when if their hand touched that the game was dead. Mm -hmm. And so she shoot me and she slipped and she uh she hit her hand on the floor and then I just I just lifted up and I just went to the crowd and she zipped around me because her knee did not go down. Uh, okay. I think it was so she zipped around me when I I turned really fast to get her and my knee just went Ooh. just ripped off. I jumped up like a cat and lay down and tore my ACL and got to get carried off and all that crap. So I had surgery just a couple of days later and they paid for it and I was up again a couple of weeks. There you go. Awesome. So they took care of you. That's good, right? They, at the time, they absolutely took care of me. But yeah, she, she got it. Her name is uh, Angela Wimbish and she's fucking awesome too. This great athlete. She's like, I got you, girl. I'm like, yeah. Lucky. 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 So, she got me on a technicality, so but the the show only lasted like three more months after that um, in Kissimmee. So it was it was closing at the time anyway. So I almost made it to the end. But what's what's what what ended the show? Like what was the reasoning for it to be over? Like, like um, I, for me as a, as a kid, like this was like it was a fucking event. Like <laughs> watching this, there was what? an event. Oh, and, and wow. instead of cheering, because you people just wanted to cheer for them, the room. I was like, I wanted you to fuck them up. <laughs> that was our job. We were I there. Was like, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm a judge's book by its cover type of guy. I'm like, this little guy ain't gonna win. This girl, man, you know. You know? Yes, and the tennis ball shooting one used to piss me off when you guys used to miss. You know the, you know that one. With the tennis ball? We call that assault. Mm. Wow, 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 I wow, hated wow, that wow. one. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a song. It, it, left bruises, it left bruises on them like crazy. I mean, big black. Okay, now I know why they ran a little faster. It, it's not assault if they participated. <laughs> you know? Selfish yeah, assault. Yeah. But so, yeah. So, what, what came, what broke, what make it come, you know, came, come to an end with this, with this, you know? With... Well, the TV show went for, for nine years. So, okay. it was, you know, it, it ran its course and, and Hollywood Just went like for everything nine. else. Yeah. And then they started it up again uh, as the live dinner show in Kissimmee, which um, that was great. You know, that's what brought me here to Florida. Still mm -hmm. here. Um, but I think the show went for three years, 95 to 98. And it was a, a marketing thing. Something happened. I mean, but it was a marketing thing for them. But it was also a major insurance deal because people were getting hurt so, so, yeah. so much. I mean, they're, you know, they cover the gladiators. I'm not sure. I don't think they paid for the contenders. They always get shit on. So they don't pay for the contenders. Sign here. But there yeah. were so many injuries. And there's, the nature of a show like ours has to have a major insurance policy that, that is just you know, unforgiving and can go on forever. And I do believe that the cost of um, the injuries outweighed the budget of the show. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, and, and, you know, everything that we did, the, the hanging stuff and people's uh, just tendons would just get ripped out, you know, and you can't move your stuff. And then yeah. they're going to sue the show. And this, you know, you sign things before, but then, you know, when things happen, the show, I'm going to fucking sue you. Like, bitch, you signed a, a waiver. Okay. <laughs> Read the fine print. Oh, apparently they don't when it comes to a lawsuit. But I, I do think injuries outweigh the budget because it was a, it was a privately owned dinner show. It wasn't Samuel Goldwyn. You know, that has all the money in the world. It was a private dinner show. And so it wasn't managed correctly for insurance and injuries and the market. They didn't market it enough. And so it was it was a money thing. We, we were all partying and nobody was paying attention to the money. <laughs> 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 so I don't know what happened. But do you guys find, like, especially in the women on, on the show, were big influencers on women training? Because this, oh. this happened in, like, you know, late 80s, early 90s, where, yeah. like, it was like, wow. She's Jack, but she's beautiful too. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it was very like, it was like for me, I was just like, damn, these super athletes are out it's here. A fine you, know line there. you know, there's a fine line, and and the girls that did not pay attention to still being women and the beauty aspect went overboard and just went crazy with it. So you know, that's up to the athlete. You know what they want to do, and makeup and hair extensions go a long way. And I'm telling you, if you start nursing that the bodybuilding part and taking all these supplements and yeah everything and then you lose your hair and you lose your looks but you're so obsessed with your muscle I, i've seen some girls that were just beautiful go way overboard with mm. the, the bodybuilding and they're like Ooh. hey that's pretty good sport. <laughs> 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 like, what the fuck happened to you <laughs> oh steve <laughs> and so that's what the gladiators were and that's what they told us they said we have to have girls that are um still feminine looking you know the guys have to be guys what i was told the guys have to be guys. The girls have to be girls. You know, you have to have the the visual appeal or whatever. So mm. I think um, almost all, I'm looking at our gladiator picture. I think all of us had like hair extensions. I've got hair extensions now. 
Um, when you are big, I'm, a, I'm 100, today was 172 pounds. I'm a big chick. What? When you don't put, yeah, I'm like 172. When you don't put like makeup and hair on, it really overpowers your femininity and probably everybody's looking at me. Well, Shannon's got makeup on because I usually don't. I did this for you, no, it's okay. I did this ah. for you. Yes. But like yes. the TV show, they were back there and they, and I think a lot of us were athletes and we were never glamorized by Hollywood. Oh. And then we got there and me and Shelly Beatty were sitting there and she's just like, this is a lot of makeup. You know, she's deaf. That's how she talks. So this is a lot oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. God, <laughs> man, when they finished with us, we're like, wow, that's now we look like Wonder Women and, you know, we don't, we don't want to break a sweat. <laughs> man, yeah. So. You know, there, there's a fine line there, and that being a gladiator, mate, you could not cross that line. So that's that's where that was. Oh, good. So you find out the show ends. How? What, what are you feeling? Um, I was laid up with my knee recovering at the time. Um, I knew it was kind of coming to an end, and I saw so many of the gladiators going out there without paychecks and just trying to keep it going through the end and trying to raise money or whatever. Just we did not ever want it to end. It was uh, of course not. It was terrible. So. Um, and for that, uh, for the ending of that, it was ending for like that kind of a life for a lot of people, but I did continue with boxing. So I fixed my knee and the, the boxing door opened. I had a contract, a professional contract. So I went right into boxing and, um, we just kind of scattered, you know, I think Shirley, the girl that played Sky, she stayed here and got married and opened a gym. Um, Ooh. I just kind of stayed in the business like that, but I mean, nothing ever compares to what we did, but uh, I get that. We, we can't ever let go of it. That's why, you know, now they're bringing the show back and now we all feel new life. Hey, Come remember us, right? Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be yeah. like, well, well, I mean, but we're not going to be, you know, we're not just as you've seen the press releases and everything that's out, you know, it's um, the WWE superstars are going to be the new, like a handful of them mm -hmm. uh, are going to be the new gladiators. Um, like I said, I'm not telling everything that I can't tell, but that was on a press release and um, they're moving forward with that. So I'm anxious to see that because if you, Think about it. It makes sense. But which wrestlers are going to give up their character to be another character? That's going to be really that's um, a challenge for me. I have a bigger, a bigger problem. Not a bigger problem. I see the, a bigger problem with the wrestlers. It's does a wrestler want to take their gimmick and become normal? And what if they got burnt on TV? Oh, um, you know what? It's going to be Vince McMahon's call, so they don't get to decide shit anyway. You know what? I wrestled with WWF oh. at the time. It was WWF. I toured with them for eight months. Uh, I was on the women's developmental program. Um, mm -hmm. Amy McMahon was, was my guy and led me through everything. And so I toured with them and trained with them. And you don't have any say so about anything you're doing, who you're going to be, what you're doing. You have absolutely no and say. It's worse now than wow. ever. Wow. Oh, I can imagine. But they, they own you 100%. Like, for instance, John Cena, that's his actual name, and he doesn't even own it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They make sure that you can't make a movie anymore without WWE Studios being a part of it. Mm. Like it's crazy mm -hmm. because some other people like The Rock and Stone Cold has made movies elsewhere, oh, and now it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Vince is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but <laughs> that's a lot of money I'm missing. What What did you like? How What made you get into wrestling, or how were you approached? How did that start? Um, well, my dad was a pro wrestler, so I actually grew up uh, in Arkansas, like the Mid South, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, big wrestling territory back in the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my dad was a couple of um, guys that wore the mask. He was like one of the assassins or assassins. Oh, no way. Okay. Huh. There were a couple of guys that did each of that. So, and I get to sit in their back and I saw a few of the guys, you know, putting on the whatever. Anyway, so I grew up around that. My dad was a pro wrestler. Um, he's passed about five years ago and he's in the Mid-South Hall of Fame wrestling. And mm. he didn't even have a forehead left. Just all the barbed wire and all the bullshit. Uh. Like, you know, so oh, I they, they, were true, they were true wrestlers back then. They they put their bodies through hell, man. They did, they did. absolutely one hundred percent. And yeah. so he was he was devoted to it and loved that. Um, so I had that background. Um, and um, see, how did they? Um, oh, oh my gosh, the <laughs> wrestling thing actually the the pro wrestling thing happened. Um, I was getting ready to go out and do my last fight. Um, I was ready to get ready to fight Susie Taylor for the IBA Women's Heavyweight Title. Mm -hmm. I've been boxing for about three years and the money just, I got $10,000 the first time I'm very money driven. <laughs> so I got $10,000 with the tough Woman world championship. I got the pro contract, uh, did a fight for eight grand and you know, tripled down seven grand. And then after three years, and oh, the more you're fighting, the, the better you you're get. doing, the shittier <laughs> the money is. 
because it was just the women's thing. It didn't take off. You know, mm. I mean, Christy Martin was here and she did really great on Don King's promotion. That's right. Was, was going with Tyson. You really have to be with someone like that, you know, to really do good. But anyway, but I was getting my the shit kicked out of me and um, I didn't spar guys as, as girls. I sparred guys. So there was no girls to train with. I was getting snot beat out of me all the time. I was really good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I got a picture here. What's this here? You're holding a few titles here. Hey, okay. Um, the one, the big one is the Tough One World Championship. Um, the other one is a martial arts title. It was the Women's Manchow Champion. Um, and that was like punches, kicking, take before yeah. it was cool. I was doing that shit, right? Mm. Um, yeah, I did that. So I had a couple of titles. Um, um, and then I had the the IFBA women's uh, platinum division title. That's a heavyweight. But all this was like so new. And so after three years, I could really feel, and I wasn't really trained and safe. I wasn't really wearing headgear. And I was just, you know, just, just tough and thinking I could take it. I didn't really, really have good management or coaching. I kind of was on my own. Yeah. So I was getting the shit kicked out of me in this last fight. I'm like, okay, I'm getting ready to do a title fight here for the women's belt. And it's only like $5,000. And then after I win this belt, I'm going to have to keep fighting. I, I got burnt out really, really fast. So I got burnt out really fast and because I had done gladiators before that. So I've done gladiators like for eight years. That's right. I was staying, getting hit in the head. I was used to just getting hit every day. But that the money part, I mean, gladiators paid great. The boxing didn't pay shit. So, mm. and I pray, I'm, I'm very, I pray to God all the time. Me and, me and Jesus are like this. He's my guy, right? So I was, okay. I was just like, God. I was like, come on, man. I, I'm not sure what my heart was. I knew when I walked up that I didn't, want, I didn't want to continue, but I don't know how to lose either, right? Yeah. So the damn phone rang in my hotel room, and uh, uh, my boyfriend's dad answered the door and uh, answered, the door, answered the phone, and he's like, uh, Shannon, you got a phone call? I'm like, I'm kind of busy right now. I'm kind of meditating before I go out and fight, you know? And he's like, no, I think you want to take this phone call. And I was like, okay, what's up? And anyway, so I answered the phone. I said, hello. And he goes, it's Shannon Hall. I said, yeah, this is Shannon Hall. He goes, Shannon, this is JR from WWE. Boom. I said, I said, no, it's not. <laughs> you must get that all the time. I love that. Yes, ma'am. This is Shannon. He goes, well, I know you're, you're pretty busy right now, but we just want to throw something in front of you. You know, we got a little contract here for you. We want to offer you 250000 for developmental with the WWF. And I said, I'm on my way. <laughs> and I said, would you say that again? He said, 250000 He said, so think about what you want to do. You cannot keep doing the boxing and doing the wrestling at the same time. Uh, you know, it's a developmental. You will fly here to Stanford or whatever. And I still thought it was a joke. I thought somebody was doing this to make me lose because shit happens in pro boxing. Oh, oh, really? Get in your head. It's dirty. And I, and I hung up the phone. I was just like, no shit. But I knew his voice. I'm like, can somebody really imitate him that good? Mm. And he, said, he said, you know, you can call Stanford. Call me up in Stanford, Connecticut, my office or whatever. And so I was just like, Lord, that's, that's what I needed. So I called uh, my manager and I just said, I said, all right. I said, I just let you know, I'm not, I'm not going to continue with this. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to go down in this fight. So I'm just letting you know, I'm going to go to wrestling. And I don't know what we need to do with this contractual wise, but he was good to me. I was just straight with him. He goes, nice. Well, let's work out a deal. And, you know, he goes, everybody goes out their own way. And so we worked out a deal and, and uh, I kind of threw the fight a little, I mean, I fought nine rounds, but I didn't really fight. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I had to, I had to fake a broke nose or else I would have might won on points or whatever. So I, you know, and something that I learned from a lot of guys that I train with, I mean, this happens in boxing all the time. You know, wow. I'm sure you guys have seen fights and you're like, that wasn't him fighting that fight. He wasn't even there. Well, I'm telling you, he did it on purpose because he didn't want to win the fight or else he got paid to, right. you're in there to make money. You know, when you're, when your life's on the line and your brain buckets, you know, scramble and you got to do the best thing you can for your life and for your family to make money and stuff. So right, right. everybody has their own situation. So that was mine. And plus I had some swelling on my brain. I almost didn't like, didn't get my boxing. I got my uh, license in New York. My boxing uh, car was from New York. So um, I had to do CAT scan or whatever. And I had some swelling on my brain anyway, and I almost didn't get my license that year. I had to take some time off. So I knew it was time for me to quit getting, oh, my, getting the shit beat out of me. So then I go to wrestling. <laughs> I'm just like, and let me tell you something. I went to wrestling and the back bumps you take, man, I, my head has never hurt worse. It hurt less in boxing than different. Wrestling is no joke, dude. <laughs> it is no joke. So I started doing that. I was with it for eight months and um, I wasn't feeling great, but I, you know, continued through doing it. And then uh, do you guys remember when Owen Hart died? Yes. Many yes. Years yes. Ago? yes. Well, I was standing right there ringside it was between two shows they taped a morning show and they taped a night show so it was between two shows he was prepping for an entrance 
And, uh, you know, he's like, hey, you know, you guys stand back here. So we just kind of backed up. And he was supposed to come down, be belayed on the thing. And he fell from about 60 feet. And they're right there in front of our faces and hit the ring and just died right there. And after that, the women's program that I was on was cut. And uh, I guess maybe the Hart family sued WW. A bunch of stuff was going on. It was it was an awful, awful time. So my program was let go. And um, anyway, you know, you know, rest in peace. Oh, and your family, that was awful. Uh, but, but, you know, they continued on like, you know, nothing happened. And, and I was just like, I didn't want to be a part of that group at the time. I didn't understand. I mean, WWF, I mean, you can't stop that show. I mean, they're all about their fans. If you, they bought those tickets, they're going to do They are so invested in their fans. Nothing's going to stop them. So for me, it was a little much and it was a good exit for me. And I was just like, I'm done. I'm ready to have a baby. So <laughs> that was my retirement bill. So, yeah. Now, now on YouTube. Uh, when we look at some interviews with you, you have a story about China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and she's passed. You know, I hate talking shit about people because, you know, they passed or whatever. But it is it is my story to tell. And, exactly. and she was she was suffering a lot. So when I met her, this was in 1998. And when I was touring with the WWF at the time and, you know, the girls had the same dressing room downstairs in most of the uh, arenas and. Um, the first time I met her, they put me right beside her and, you know, it's like two pit bulls, man. We fucking bumped heads right there and fucking shit just went crazy. And I was just sat next to her. I said, Hey, her name is Joni. You know, her name is Joni. And I said, Hey, Joni, I'm Shannon. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. And she just, she just said some really awful shit and just said, God, who are they letting in here nowadays? And I was like, wow. I just said, bitch, just a look. I said, you're pro, I'm a fighter. I said, you this wrestling shit ain't going to work for you. I said, don't fucking start your shit with me. She said something else. And it was so, I was just so happy to be there again. Like China, and she just like, just looked at me, just, she was just disgusted. But they pulled me off of her and they're like, dude, don't mess with her. They're like, nobody likes her. She don't like herself. She's going through a bunch of shit. Just let it go. And I'm just like, Are you, you guys talk to each other. But that was the only bad experience that I had with her. And I, I got up and threw my chair back and she got up and I got up and the, I can't remember who it was, the divas grab me or whatever. And I said, I'm not a fucking wrestler. I'm a, I'll beat you shit. I'm a fighter, motherfucker. Really? You're going to talk shit. She said something else. I can't remember what it was. You'll but it went off for short. <laughs> and then that night, someone put dog shit in her locker. Okay. <laughs> We're it, And she thought it was me. So now she really fucking hates me. China's going to shoot me. And I'm just like, I did, we're, we're somewhere going to find dog shit in the middle of fucking New York area. In a something. Where is someone going to find dog shit? I'm like, it was not me. I would not do I, I was the I was a huge fan of hers and she just okay, but let me tell you something about me. Mm -hmm. I I am a fighter. I, I will fight to the death. I will stand up for my honor. I will defend somebody. Um I'm not an asshole, but like you you know, there's that distance, you know. Mm -hmm. There's but when someone fucking crosses that, you know, you know if you're oh, fighting, yeah. you, you know, and I unfortunately I have always been, and I will always be, uh, you know, until the day I die, I'll, I'll scrap. So I didn't care who she was. She said, she, I can't remember what she, she did say something else that's good. Who are they letting in nowadays? And she was like, really? And just like, fuck you, motherfucker. I went, I went professional to ghetto in 1.3 seconds. What? What? It's awful. What? I love it. No, I did. I got real, I got, I, I'm pretty ghetto. So I, I tried to hide that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Do what I you gotta do. Street, man. I lived on the street and under a bridge at one point in my early 20s, and I know what it's like. I know what that's like to fucking eat out of a trash can for a minute mm. and try to find yourself spiritually. I found God under a bridge, you know, so, but by my own means and by my own attitude, but but I will fight. You know, God put that in me. That's why I'm still here. I think 100% well, I would have put my money on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's, it depends on the reason, you know? It's the reason for the fight. That's, that's I hate to say that about her, and she's passed and was really going through a lot. No, a lot, a lot. That's a, lot. That's a, that's a negative, negative moment in WWE. Do you have a positive moment? Did you have a wow moment when you were there? My wow moment is Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord, have mercy, that man. He, okay, I got around celebrities. I was a gladiator, and we had celebrities do the show. I have never in my life stood in front of someone. Okay, mind you, I was I was backstage doing something, and I, and I turned around, and my nose went right between his pecs, and he had a shirt off. He just got up doing, doing a match, and I turned around, my nose hit there, and I was just like, and I looked at him, he goes, hey, Shannon, I heard you were going to be coming. You know, I'm just like, he knows my name. <laughs> he knows my name. I'm like, 
I was speechless. I have never, he is the real deal. I've never been starstruck by anybody by my life, but he is the most beautiful man that I've ever seen in my life with the character, his integrity, mm-hmm. his aura, everything about him is a hundred percent the real deal. So kind, so big. I'm just like, I've never felt like that. He is the only man that's really made me feel like a woman. All right. <laughs> I think he is, I think he is Mr. Shannon. Okay. <laughs> I can look anybody else's ass. Okay. Except his. Woo. Ooh, he's, is- uh, he's a hard worker. Cause you know uh, what I mean? Like, even if you look at some of his early years of acting, it wasn't very good to what he's doing now. He's, don't be talking about my next ex husband. <laughs> <laughs> dude, the dude has killed the game. He wasn't, when he came uh, into WWE, he wasn't like, it's not that he wasn't a good wrestler. People didn't really a, like him. They, they wasn't, they were into to, him. you know, they were not feeling him. through that shit to become awesome. one of the biggest stars ever. He's a, he was meant to be an actor um, because another thing, too, drugs were going rampant back then. When I was there, there was like no regulation in WWF, and it has changed a lot now, but man, people were just, um, I'm not gonna. I think I said names before. I'm not gonna say the person that I was riding with from yeah, yeah. Boston, New York. The briefcase with everybody's contract. You take the briefcase because uh, this man's gangster. You get paid in cash, all right? You go downstairs. You get your money. You put it in your damn briefcase and lock that shit up, all right? So we got we getting paid cash, right? Bing. So my friend, I won't say his name, look, open it up and like they're just weed all in his brief. I'm like, <laughs> is that weed in your briefcase? It's just like bags and bags of weed. He's like, yeah, that's the only way we can survive, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Then. Sound like a good friend. Sound like a good friend. I, I like that right guy. Car, dude. Okay, I was in the right car. You're right. We had a good time driving to New York. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember the trip. Oh, my God. But they're hurting so bad because it's medicinal. Now everybody knows it's medicinal marijuana. Well, they knew that back then, and they used it for just the calm. The th- when you, okay, when you get hit in the face 5,000 times, or when you take 25 bumps, and you're doing this, and there's millions of people chanting your name, when you leave that place, you're still... Mm, vibrating yeah yeah and that is the only way to de-vibrate you know is, is yep. smoke some weed have a beer or else it doesn't it doesn't go away and it's like a super a, a big yeah. night of djing and they have to do this night after night so they fly here yeah oh yeah they have oh, it yeah. and if there's no downtime you will get burnt out injured hurt so everybody was self-medicating and these are all good people but man it was like you know Lollapalooza. <laughs> Shit, what, are you, you, in WWE, you'll watch you'll watch a pay per view event where they're playing. I don't know. Let's say a ladders match, whatever the case may be, a Hell in a Cell match, and then wrestle the next day on Monday Night Raw. And I'm like, there's no fucking way this guy's coming out, <laughs> and he comes out, and I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with this dude? See, they're, they're animals. I mean, they're it's smoking it's, that good stuff. Oh my oh. god. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what dude. those briefcases are for that they're carrying around. I was like, what is going? here because as a boxer so here's the difference in boxing and wrestling as a fighter we are piss tested all the time randomly as a pro you can't have shit in your system you can't right. see mm-hmm. they test you for anything or, and you could lose your license mm-hmm. so at the time when i had my license you know my promoter told me you know you get pop you're for anything and you know you're you're out you just can't you know we, we can't have this with the company blah 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 right. so boxers um at that time were, were pretty clean now i think some were doing like cocaine. I think they would do coke because it gets out of your system in two or three days. So I think the drug of choice for boxers, not that you need to be doing coke, okay? But, <laughs> okay, but my point was just to it's escape. Training uh, purposes. For, to, to, to get out of your head for a minute. So I know some people that did that, so they did do that. But as far as the weed and um, like major pain pills or things that can lag, you can have, So my system was so clean when I got there. And I'm scared by just high as a kite. And I'm like, I don't know what it's like to uh, fight like fucked up like that. So I didn't. I wasn't, I wasn't smoking. I wasn't drinking. I was. I was new. I didn't want to get in trouble by anybody. So right. I'm just like, oh, crazy. But man, I now I understand after training with them for six months why they were doing it. It you're just you're just rattled all the time, man. You, you gotta have a downtime. It's just not gonna last. Have you, did you, did you ever have a dark match at all? Um, no, every, all my, was just trained. I was supposed to wrestle China. And then China said that she did not want to wrestle me because I was too rough. I'm what, 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 too rough. That was, she didn't want to wrestle me. So it was too rough. And I've been training for like six months, but she was supposed to be my first match. Wow. It was her. And then they didn't have anybody to put me with. She was like the biggest girl on the we show. Missed, so we oh, missed out. Mm. There was no more. I was the other big girl that was going to come in. I don't know what. 
I don't know if I was going to replace her. I don't know what the thing was. Maybe she knew something that I didn't. We were supposed to start off together, and they just said she refuses to wrestle you. I'm just like, this is pro wrestling. She's going to whip my ass. I'm sure. They said she does not want a match. She said she watched your training, and you're too rough. I'm like, I'm lifting a 245-pound Nicole Bass and barely laying her down, and we, we wrestled whole matches. I'm like, that's bullshit. So it was because of her. I had no one to wrestle. So then you guys remember Badass Billy Gunn? Yeah, yeah. of course. Okay, so they partnered me with Badass Billy Gunn. My name was going to be Candy Ass. I really ah, I love it. All that stuff, I watched Victoria's butt. All those leg presses paid off. That nice team. <laughs> Boom. See where it links go. now? <laughs> I was going to be Candy Ass, and um, I was going to be coming out with him. And then he did not want a valet. He said, oh. if you're a valet, that means I'm not good anymore. I don't want a valet. So I'm like, would somebody let me get on the show? So I love the valet slash managers in wrestling. He, didn't want mm. one. he said that, that they thought that that meant that he wasn't big enough to come by himself if they're going to put another girl with him to walk out. So he, I'm just like, I was there ready to work. And they're like, we're having trouble finding a place for you. And I'm like, just look at right out there and do the splits in the middle of the ring during the show. Something, you know? So that's why I never got to. But you know what? It wasn't meant to be. I'm, I know God well enough to know if it was meant to be, it would have. And there was a reason for it never happening. I may have gotten really bad hurt or something, but I was yeah. out of that ring for a reason. Now, so, you okay. never got any contacts with their competitors like WCW or anything like that? Um, No, because I started having kids. So oh. I retired and I had my son and um, then I had my daughter. So I retired. Yeah. Now, do you feel like the training was good enough to be like, Okay, cool. I did an aspect of wrestling. Like I did a bit of it. I know that I, you know. Oh yeah, I can still do a match. I know what's up. Um, I actually, um, my friend, uh, do you guys uh, know Team Three D Wrestling Academy and Cassini? Oh. You, know, you know that uh, the Devon, uh, Devon that, Dudley, and Bob, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hmm. Ray and Devon's place. So Dan Carr is one of my best friends, and he's the lead trainer over there. He's actually the co-creator of the American Gladiator Show. Um, I go to hang out with Dan and watch the matches and see Devon and stuff and go over there with the kids training. So I want to motivate them. I'm like, Hey, it's Dallas. I'm like, are you guys are doing a great job? So I kind of go and like give them a little motivation. Man, they, they train so hard. So yeah, I could, I could still do a match and fake some shit, you know? So yeah. I, I believe it. Don't, don't get me wrong. I good believe good. it. Oh, it was so fun. It, it hurt, but it was really fun. I wish I could have done something, but now uh -huh. being a competitor, you competed in American gladiators. You're a pro boxer. Mm -hmm. You were, you know, wrestling, does anything, like, I want to know the comparison to those three and being on Conan O'Brien. Now you're not competing. Now you're being interviewed live on national TV instead of being a competitor. How much of a difference was that? It was way different. Um, but I was so punch drunk, I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> so I'm like, I can beat Oscar De La Hoya. I, th I thought that I just could. And I, it's just for me getting hit in the head too many times. I didn't really understand. Oscar but, probably oh. understood. <laughs> well, we Oscar did things together. We did um, uh, events together. So we would go places I would, as tough on the world champion conventions together. So we would go to conventions and Oscar was standing right beside me. You know, he was the boxing champion of the world and I was a tough on the world champion. And so me and Oscar would stand there and people would take pictures of us. And I was looking at him and I was just like, I could whoop your ass. <laughs> I just stood there and I'm like, you small little person. I can get oh, you to the ground. You would not know it. In my head, this oh is how my I, God. This is how I think. I'm like, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I can whoop your I don't know how to say that in Spanish, but me whoop a yoasa. So that's how mm. whatever. He looked at me, he's like, you know, Blanca Chica. I'm like, oh. <laughs> anyway, that's how ridiculous. And I said that just because we did that. I'm just like, I think I can beat him up. In the street, if I could take him down, I could whoop his ass. That's up. exactly yeah. it. It's a different Boom. style. Absolutely. In my, in my brain, you know, and I'm sorry, Oscar, you're just freaking awesome. So, but it's because I was here. <laughs> But I loved it. I loved it. The reason why I asked you, well, is it a lot different? Because like even us hosting a podcast, I yeah. find it's easier for me to host because I've been asked to be interviewed and I don't want to be on the other side. Why? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. What do you got to hide there? Absolutely, you know nothing. Dang. That's the sad thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on to something. You're on to something. Yeah. You feel safe over there, don't you? Nah, I just, <laughs> I, I, do what it is. I just. I just. I think it's just. I don't know what it is. I just don't want them to. I want to take over the show. I think it's going to be like, they're going to start asking me questions. I'm going to be like, ah, fuck this. I'm going to ask them questions. I don't know what it is. I think I'm going to fuck up the whole interview. That's why I'm like, eh, I don't want to do it. But, but you I, know, the, the, Conan O'Brien, he was amazing. We've got like the same birthday. And before he's like, we're both April 18th. His that's birthday. so awesome. 
and we're both Irish and he's just like, we're going to have a good time and let's talk about some stuff. And you're, and I'm also an arm wrestling champion. So I'm like two time Daytona bike week arm wrestling champion. You know, really? So man, really? man, the, I am, I am so, it's ridiculous how strong my hands are in my arms. I, I am crazy. See, crazy. See, oh. see, if I would have met you, and went on a date and came back to your house and seen all these belts and trophies. I was leaving. I'm letting you know. I was out. And I'm like, sorry, got to go. Now see, why would you say that? Because why? I'm a punk. I'm a punk. I'm a pussy. <laughs> I will fucking say it. All right? Done. I said it. Bam. Yeah. It's out there. But, you know? but wouldn't you just want to like be, be a be a good boy and be nice to somebody that could kick your ass? Is this that money? See, he's a punk. I'm a sucker. I'd be like, yo, put me in this one hold and then and, and just start crying. Like, I'm different. <laughs> no, I, I, you see the different, but no, you see the, the different mentality as far as that. So, so you'd really like it. And like, you're scared of it. So so that means that you would end up challenging me, Bamboo. If you think like that, then you would somehow end up, you don't know what you're No, 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 because no, I don't like pain. So I'm not going to put myself through that. You understand well, what I'm saying? Know, he's going to put himself through it because he's like, put me in a hole and he's going to be like, ah, and then he's going to fight after it. You see? No. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. I'm just going to go and stay home and stew on my juices. Talk about that fucking girl could have whipped yeah, my fucking exactly. ass. And, 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 you know, and and the funny thing about it is I would never forget you because you'd be the one that got away. Oh. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. But you, you know? see yourself like crawling up on the couch with me, with me wrapping my legs around you and just kind of holding you from the back watching TV. Oh, see? Yeah, see? see? No, I, I, I look. This I, is can't, our, I, I can't. Like, hey, Shannon, can I have my, the remote? And she just chokes you out. Yep. You know what I mean. <laughs> my bow, my bow's just done. Boom, <laughs> boom, and everything gone. And you know, I'll be freaking out. Yeah, ask her, can you change the channel and you're going to sleep all of a sudden? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, maybe right. Maybe personal right. question: Have you ever been on a terrible date where you have to almost fuck some dude up? Ah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. See? Oh, yeah. I cannot stand um, guys that think they can touch you. Oh. Crap, you know, just accident. Okay, this is a good. I've never told this story before. Oh, yes, I got one for you. Um, I flew to Sao Paulo, Brazil, a couple of years ago because I met a guy online and I wanted him to lead my jujitsu school. Uh, his name was Allison, and we talked for several months online. And um, of course, there's always a visa involved. We're, we're actually sponsoring Alan Patrick Nuget from the UFC. Now we're actually his sponsor now for his oh, visa. Shit. Fighting next weekend on UFC. Alan Patrick Nuget, what's up? Good. Anyway, yeah. uh, so I went to Brazil to meet this guy and to do some paperwork to get him over here. So I met with him and um, uh, everything was going good. And, and in Sao Paulo, the, the way that the city is done, it's very, it's all open, like these really tall buildings, but all the bars and restaurants are open. Everything's very open, kind of like mm. a marketplace. You just kind of go in and out places and people are going in and out. It's not an enclosure. It's kind of like, you know, it's very open. It's really, really nice. So um, I was getting lit, you know, I was doing karaoke. I could sing English. Everybody wanted me to sing Michael Jackson shit. No, everybody supports me. You know, Michael Jackson. Yeah, so I was just going crazy. <laughs> I was just playing poker, um, and I was drinking some cool, clear shit. It was really good. Mm. And um, this guy, um, and I guess it was a friend of his, came out of the room, and he started, like, kind of put, we, it was pretty crowded. So he kind of put his hands in me a little bit, like, hey. And I was like, hey, motherfucker, back off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right. I was like, back off a little bit. And he kept getting like close to me and you know, it got into the evening we were drinking. I told Allison, he could barely speak any English anyway. And I was just like, get the translator. I'm making sure he knew what I was saying. I'm like, this guy won't leave me alone. And he's like putting his hands. I mean, I'm telling you, if it's your friend, tell him to stop. I'm, I won't put up with this shit. And I had been drinking for about three hours. Right. So he's like, Oh no, that's okay. He goes, don't do anything. There's not police here. People get stabbed here all the time. Don't start anything with anybody. Just let shit go. And just go. What That's what he told me. And I'm like, Okay, I'm in Brazil and I don't know anybody. So, okay, I'm going to try to just chill out. Nope. So, Allison went to the bathroom again. Here comes this guy and he fucking puts his hands on me and I fucking start swinging. I, I, I mean, he like, so apparently this must happen there all the time. The girls don't do shit. So, he put his hands on me and I fucking started swinging and I fucking knocked him down to the floor. And so, I did the old one, two, and I had it on the floor. Allison runs out and grabs me. No, no, get into the Uber. Like, I, like I just some, did something terrible. We got in a horrible fight. Went back to the hotel. I thought he was trying to help me. And we got to the hotel. And he goes, "Don't you ever in, in Portuguese, English, bro, Don't you ever put your hands on any one of my friends? That was my fucking brother. How dare you do that or whatever?" What? And he punched him in the face. Okay, I did. So there you go. There you go. Now we're talking. The jiu-jitsu black belt world champion. And if he 
great. And I knew if he grabbed a hold of me, I wouldn't be able to get out of it. He's yeah. I'm not a black belt in jiu-jitsu. So he backed me up against the hotel room wall and he, you know, I'll just show you this so you can't see, but he backed me up to the hotel like this and he went to fucking take me down. Yeah. He, and I knew, I knew I was gone. So I went, boom. And I fucking hit him as hard as I could in the top of his head and lifeless in the floor. He just boom, went lifeless in the floor. I was fighting for my life. He was going to court. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No kidding. He was, if he had his things right, I would have, he would have killed me. I was in the middle of Brazil. No one fucking knows who I did. That's happen. right. People. I scrapped around. I called the hotel security, whatever. I'm like, come get this motherfucker out of my room. I don't know if he's about to kill me if he wakes up. And then his other brother walks in, right? People. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just like, that's how fucked up things can be. People. Did he put out the bat signal to come kill the white girl? <laughs> no. So, people, um, people, people that's listening out there, that was official beat down. Yeah. Okay? You know he beat him down. You're a motherfucker. Woo! So, I did, it was complete self-defense. And it squashed the whole deal with us. And he attacked me in the room. And I called security and... He ended up sneaking in the hotel. I was there for seven days. I was like the second dad, five days. Oh mm. no! I tried to get home or whatever. I called his. Uh, I called the Barbosa Jiu Jitsu and I told his sensei. I said, "Look, this motherfucker just attacked me in my room." And I, so the last day, uh, right before I got on the airplane, I was airplane. It was a beautiful high rise in the middle of downtown San Paulo, and, and I was outside in the workout room. And it was nice, right? So I was like riding my bike, just trying to wait to go home. This motherfucker put on a disguise and he snuck up the service elevator and came in from this elevator from the site. And I, he had like a toboggan on and a backpack and like these glasses. And I knew by the way he was moving, I knew it was him. I was around the bicycle. I'm just like, oh shit. And I got off of the bike um, and he took his glasses off and he just, he, he did this right here. He just, he just said, wait, I'm just like, get the fuck away from me, dude. And he said, just wait. And he did it on the translator or whatever. And he was said, you know, that was my brother. People do that here. You know, nobody does stuff like that. You could have got killed or whatever. I'm just like, just leave. All right. Just, just leave whatever. And I'm trying to scoot back around to the, to the ele elevator. And then he's, and he took, he took his helmet. He took the toboggan off. And he's like, he's like, look what you did in my head. He had a giant. Good. Diploma in the side of his head. He goes, I can't even train now. I can't go to the gym. Look what you did in my head. He started crying. This is what he did to his head, by the That's way. That's right. That's he started right. crying. He goes, look what you did. I was like, I was scared. Like, you want another one, motherfucker? Yeah, I'll match <laughs> it on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> Come on. I, know, I was scared, though. He just, because he, he started crying and then he did, wasn't crying. Like, this motherfucker's crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy. See? See? So I got away from a second situation. He goes, but you, he goes, but you're like my best friend. He was nuts, dude. So wow. He was from the favela. All he right. So next hell. time you go down to Brazil, you need to bring us two goons to help you out. There you go. I need some backup. So. And you can punch anybody in the face. I'm, I'm, I don't give a shit. Dude, hey, you know what? God was with me again. I'm telling you, I, I fought myself out of situations. I was attacked in Mexico. I had a guy jump out of a van with a fucking knife and try to fucking take my fanny pack and Puerto uh, Vallarta. And I fought my way out of that one when I was like only 21 years old. So I've been attacked by dudes. I mean, attack, attack. So I can fight. And I'm just telling you, it's a natural. Training is one thing. I can box. I can wrestle. I can do some jujitsu. But, but being a fighter, it's, it's natural. Mm. Natural. I'm a fighter. I will. Till, till, the day, till the day I die, man. Thank God. And that's why I'm still here. So, yeah. No, I, but we're happy you're still here. Because you still need to knock some fucking people out. And stuff. I'm just like... Oh, oh, oh. I don't mean to go. <laughs> it is, it is true, you know. But I'm saying, I it's because of God. I pray all the time in those situations. In Brazil, I have my Bible out right here, and I'm just like, Lord, please. I don't know why you got me still here, but please get me home safely. In Mexico, I'm like, Lord, please get me home safely. But I pray all the time, so I'm guided and, and protected by God. That's but now I'm you are not going anywhere by yourself. There you go. <laughs> Send us some messages. You know, we're gonna we're gonna help you out. You I got some fat now. Okay, cool. And, and, yeah, and now, absolutely. We know you're in Florida. We're coming down. I got some people that lived in Kissimmee. So, oh, you know, we'll we, we be down. We'll be down in a minute. You know? Yeah, we have, we have a lot of people we got to visit down there. We definitely yeah. have to head out there. Definitely. It'll be great. Florida, Florida's a good place to live right now. You know, things are busy and people are working and there's no more masks down here. And it's, I don't think we ever had any, you know, much to begin with. Only a doctor's offices. But mm. talking about masks, how, how did COVID, yeah. COVID affect you in the last couple of years? It was, it was completely awful. Um, first of all, you know, everybody, I believe that everybody's entitled to believe what they want to believe. Yeah. How you want to vote. That is the beauty of being here. Of course. Um, 
But for someone to try to put a mask on me when I can't breathe and I have anxiety and it causes my health to deteriorate, just me personally. No, no, I feel the same way. To try to tell me to do that. I've never felt so my freedom so violated in my life. I never had COVID. I never had symptoms. I never and think because I'm health, I'm natural immunity. I take supplements. I train. I'm in the sun. I work out. That's right. My natural immunity. So, but you know, people that aren't strong, that is the people that should wear a mask and take care of themselves and stuff like that. So anyway, that was the weirdest and still it's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to, cause I'm, I'm a free wild child, dude. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm free. I don't know how to be enclosed. I get claustrophobia easy. So that type of environment just about crushed me. So me and my kids and my family, we made a decision how we were going to live and how we were going to handle it. And we, you know, only wear masks when we had to fly on the airplane or whatever. Mm -hmm. We chose to eat outside because we had anxiety and issues and doing that, you know, we, and we did try to comply and, and wear these around. But for us, it made our mental health decline quickly, yeah. quickly. That's just the way that, you know, those are my kids. That's how we are. But anyway, but I just opened the gym. And so I just opened the gym and then nobody wanted to come work out. So, you know, the gym business went crazy. Um, I think we were out probably the least that anybody in the nation as far as the gyms here in Florida. But um, I was able to still open and, and stay afloat and just fought through it. And I kept, you know, I get on social media, come in here and be healthy. I am cleaning. I am sanitizing for those that are concerned about that. We, you know, we should do that anyway. That's why we <laughs> yes. I'll yeah. mop our mats with things so you don't get, you know, staff infections. So that's we, right. That's there right. You go. So I encourage them to come in, be social. It really affected these kids. Like, you yeah, there's like, there's a huge mental health crisis going on right now for teenagers, mm -hmm. young adults at all are from that. I'm dealing with it here because the kids are coming in here dealing with issues I've never dealt with before. But here, nobody's telling you to wear a mask, but we're going to work out. We're going to stay clean. We're going to you know, awesome. interact with each right. other. You know, we're going to get our sweat on, which is healthy. We're going to get out in the sun. And, and mm -hmm. so I'm an advocate for natural immunity. So I'll just, I'll just leave it right there. I'm an advocate for it. And if you're not feeling well, wear your mask. Do what makes you feel yeah, 100%. Good. Comply to whatever business owners want you to do for their business. It is their business. But you do what you feel that you need to do. But don't tell other people what the fuck. Oh, I know. The balls. That's where, that's where I have an issue and a problem. And when you judge someone for them acting on their own best interests, but you know what? Just the TV and the, the government, they've got everybody all messed up. So I feel sorry for everybody. I do. It just breaks my heart. We, we, so, because I hear it. I'm, I'm, I'm in Ottawa, Canada, right? The capital. We had that freedom oh, convoy. Oh, okay. Hey. Yeah. So we're, 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 we had that freedom convoy where all the truckers showed up at the. That was incredible. Oh, my God. Okay. It was overrated, by the way. It was, it was overrated. The news made it look like they crippled their city. It crippled two streets downtown that no one drove by anyways. It was fucking ridiculous. So we, 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 we had a podcast and we, at one point we, me and Bam were talking about, should the freedom convoy continue? So it was about two, three weeks in Bam's like, nah, they should go home. I said, they sh we should continue it. Sometimes you're in so deep that you got to keep going. Uh, YouTube made it, took took down our episode saying that we're giving out what false information, medical yep. information mm -hmm. about COVID. Yep. We're like, we never brought up anything about COVID or we never would tell anyone anything nope. Nope. about nope. what to do. See why it's so messed up? And I, I just, oh my gosh, who owns YouTube, by the way? A jackass. I don't know. I don't know. I made that up. I don't know who you are. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> do what it is, it's, I didn't put... The YouTube owner's a jackass on the title, so I think we're okay. Because um, that's where they catch us, is titles and stuff, right? It's so, just, it's so messed up. But you know what? Our country has survived so much shit, and I think that we've really survived this one, you know? And I, you know, let's let's all think about this next election. And I think the Republican Party and the Democratic Party have changed what they, they are not what they used to be 10 years ago, and they have really divided themselves as to what they stand for. And um, to be honest with you, we're not even like the United States. We're the most divided states, divided country I've ever oh, seen in my life. Yeah. We could actually split right down the middle and one live this way and then one live this <laughs> it's way. True. Yeah, it's no, true. Seriously, it's we're not true. the United States. It's the most divided states, um, the most divided country in the nation. And we're 50-50. So I think the ones that, that are democratic and follow that, I think they need to stay on the West Coast and everybody's kind of coming over here and New York needs to get a handle up there, you know? Yeah, so, I know. New York, yeah, New York is going to be the way New York's going to be. New York, well, you know, yeah, New, New York tend to just be New York. You understand what I mean? Well, New 
Yorkers are still the real New Yorkers. They're weathering the storm. They're well, weathering the storm up there, you know? They're just doing what they got to do, right? But, you yeah. know, I hear where you're coming from. With, New York and be able to say, we're New Yorkers. We can do what the fuck we want. They're no yeah. fucking pussies. You know, where, okay. wherever we go around, it, put it this way. When you meet someone from New York, when we go to another country, where you from? New York. I don't even say I'm from the U.S. It's true. I'm from New York. This is true. You know, I, I, that state is it. That's all I represent. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Because I know, no, I know nothing about Florida, you know? Yeah. Come on down. I'll show you. Mm. <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah, but no, the country is, is you know, Incredible. that's the way they want it. That's the way they want it. The government made it that way. They made it that way. They keep people divided because the bottom line is if the West Coast and East Coast sit down and actually talk and ask, ask the yeah. one question, why is it not working? They're going to say the government. And that's the last thing they want. Everybody to go, the government is fucked up. They're not doing their job. You understand? Yeah. Keep them divided. Keep them arguing. Uh, they get to stay in power. Do you think that Do you think that one president, the right leader for us, could bring everybody back together? Do you think it's possible? Or you think yes. we're talking on? Yes. Because yeah. I do. I I'm do. Gonna, I'm, as a Canadian, I'm going to tell you what I think the problem is. We need is. a hero, baby. We need a hero. I'm going to tell you what I think the problem is in the States. I think once you find that right president... This two term bullshit and get rid of them. Four, yeah, two terms. Yeah, two terms, eight years. Yeah, it yeah. is wrong because then you could throw someone else in power and de start derailing what this man or woman has done. Yeah, and this is what I think is wrong because you you should find. I don't. I'm not saying dictatorship. I'm talking about still have a voting system. Yeah. And if this guy's doing a great job, get him on the third or fourth term. That's what I, that I think the problem is. Because you can see someone's trying to, you know what I mean? They, it takes a while for things to slowly change. And when things start to move in the right direction, it's like, boom, your time's up. Next. Yes, I know, right? It's like, oh. what the fuck is that? The, right. problem is, the problem is whoever's in power got one idea that's agreeing with one side, the other side is blocking it. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. That it's, always, it's always been that. If you can get a guy that can get half and half from each side, that'll bring everybody together. Yes. You know what I mean? But yeah. the problem is always one party got somebody at the top. Always. And the other side is upset. You know what I mean? You need yeah. somebody that ain't affiliated with neither one of those parties and he's at the top. Do you think a leader should not be like 80? Right. Ah. Yes. I think there should be a, an age limit or a, a competitive. What the fuck does he have anything to do with me? Like We have no similarities in any sense. Like that's that like you gotta be like you gotta be more com you have to be more grounded with your people to start moving the country in certain directions. Uh, and being yeah, 80, 84 years old. Yeah, what the yeah, fuck that, is that? that now, now that we brought this up, I got a question for her, okay. and I, I want to see what she thinks. Um, Trump, what, what, what was your thought about this man? Uh, well, I've been with the Republican Party for like mm -hmm. ten years, so right. I'm a Republican Party supporter. Um, mm -hmm. Trump as a person, I mean. He was so exposed with, you know, for him being a playboy back in the day and, you know, the shitty things that he yeah. did. So him as a person, of course, he was not good for the country because, of you know, the way he said things. He didn't know how to be a politician. He did not know <laughs> how to swim around, swimmingly say things and not mm -hmm. offend everybody. He's used to offending people. That's mm -hmm. what he does. I kind of mm -hmm. liked it. Really? He, he was on a platform on his TV show where he was – the president of his TV show, what he said, yep. oh, so he had a fan base from that. So he took that into office and his personality did not work. He's, you know, he's a TV person and a mm -hmm. businessman, right? whatever. Right. Right. But, his, but his, what he did, he really impressed me with how he ran the country policy Boom. wise, government wise. Boom. Yes. That's, that's why I asked you because I tell everybody, take away all the bullshit he's talking let me ask you a question. What did he do to be a bad president? You know what he did? He gave the other side too much fuel with his mouth to fucking come down on him hard. He needed to shut the fuck up sometimes and just fucking shut up and sign some papers. He gave them too much fuel and it burned him. That, that burned him. Yes. You know what I mean? But He would just power through it, but you can't do that in politics. And you know what? I'm telling you what. I know that he's learned. He's not a dumb person. And I know that he's learned a lot right now. So, I mean, who knows what's to come? But, um... His personality was right. The man, his policy, what he did for us is fucking great. I mean, so he did a great job policy wise, but you mm -hmm. know, dealing with the American people, you got to be a little bit more. If he, if it could be Obama's personality with Trump's, you know, <laughs> performance, man, that would be Boom. funny. That, 
there. And that's the type of, you know, and and that's the type of person we need at the top. That's not affiliated with neither side. That's willing to appeal to both sides. Do you find it funny after he's done being the president? He gets, you know, the votes come in. He's not president. That's when they decide to cancel his Twitter account. <laughs> like what the fuck? He's been hurting himself the whole time with his Twitter account. Yes. Once he loses the voting, the Biden, it's like, okay, well let's let's ban him from Twitter now. Like what the fuck was that? They're just still, they're just still rubbing it in, you know. Obama and Trump need to have a baby, okay? That's what needs to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. From each, you know, have that smooth it, but I, I, don't, yeah, I don't think he should be brought back in. I'm, I really like. I don't know. I, I believe I believe in the New York. You know, and the United States policy, you know, I, I believe in it. it. It can work. It's it's a good system. It's just the people that's in power are too busy about themselves. God, all all right, my Lord have mercy. Yes. What about the people? But you know, you know what? Like I said, we have gone through so much as a country. I know we're going to make it through this and we're going to get stronger because of it. Because, I mean, every other country has too much stuff invested into the U.S. to destroy it. Everybody has investments here. The money is here. If they destroy the U.S., they destroy their economy. Every other country is here. Yeah. I think that is what is that's what saves us, and that's what's going to save us. But my God, we have to have a leader that can do all this. That can pull it together. I, I, I do like DeSantis because he's pretty much cut and dried, and you know he's not straight white. He's Italian, so there's some brown up in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. So we need a good caramello mix, you know. <laughs> you know that we know we can be bad. I love to. Yeah. He's doing a great job and um, he's got a great following and he's military background and um, he's the only one that I see that's pretty pure and there's, there's not all this bullshit around him. It's cut right and he does jobs. He gets papers signed. He stands there for the people. Um, we just love the shit out of him. I, I'd only give him up if he's president, you know, so. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. Yeah, well, thank you for answering my question. Yes, sir. <laughs> So Shannon, talking about training, what are you currently? You're currently training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu still. Um, Boxing. What do you? I'm the, I'm the assistant coach for our Brazilian Jiu Jitsu kids right. class. We get a really good class. Right. And I love working with the kids. Um, I'm about purple belt level. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think I've dated enough guys to be a purple belt. So the Jiu Jitsu guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the wrestlers. Okay, my ex husband was a. a a world champion freestyle wrestler. My dad was a pro wrestler. So, you know, my boyfriends, I probably dated four black belts, you know. Oh my God. So I probably dated four black belts. So that, I've been belted in my own way, if you know what I mean. So, damn. um, Okay. I I love helping the kids. I do know the basic things. Uh, And, you know, Uziel, our our instructor, that's really good. Uziel Santos, he's our head instructor here. His technique is fantastic. I've learned a lot from him, you know, just teaching the kids. I can't practice jujitsu anymore because I do have a fake knee. And I cannot do the ground positions. I can't bend my knee all the way to get side control. I can't do the butterfly guard because the knee goes back too far. I'm limited in capacity with that. Mm-hmm. Plus, I have big fake boobs. And I get boob tapped out all the time with the gi. I'm just like, fuck all you guys. If we're in a real fight, this would not be happening anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, so jiu-jitsu hurts me, but I still do it. But I am the boxing coach. I still love to hit, kickbox, strike. Muay Thai, all that stuff. I'm a striker. And if you take me down, you know, you're going to be in trouble. That's all I've got to say. I'm big. Okay. Man, that will choke you out. So, Boom. See, this is why I went home. Hey. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but I just, I do that here. Um, I just, I do weight training and cardio. I run on the beach. So, but um, I guess I'm 52. I, I feel it, you know, so I have to really, um, I just do a little bit every day. So I don't. Because yeah, when you put that, you, it was like, oh, birthday, I've turned 52 today. And she puts that on Instagram. And I went, huh? What? No, no way. No, I would have guessed 42 to be goddamn honest with you, but not 52. Oh, thank you. Well, That's you know true. what? I take really good care of myself, man. Yes, you do. I don't smoke. Um, I just drink tequila and wine. Mm, and tequila, man, tequila. tequila. Mm. I just had my margarita today, so, you know, on the beach. And so that was nice. Every and time I win a bet with Bam, tequila's involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tequila. Well, oh. you know, yeah, it's the good tequila. So you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, now, now that you got you know you got into training and you, you know you love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you're a great boxer, did you not wish that MMA started up? Early? Oh man, I yeah, I missed my calling there. Like I said, I was doing the the San Xiao fighting. I trained with Kung Lee. There was a tournament there, and Kung Lee is the one that showed me how to do San Xiao. And so wow, uh, he, you know he's a badass. So and I think he's actually done some MMA. He did some fights. Yes, you know? he did. Yeah. But once again, we're really, you know, advanced in age and stuff. And man, it really, of course, if there's wear and tear on you, like, 
crazy. So we both missed the boat, but he did do a few fights. You know, he's he's awesome like that. But I, I wish I could have. I would me and Chris Cyborg, we would have fucking toe to toe. Oh my god! Yeah, this. I would love to fight her just because she is who I would have been. She is me. That's who I would have been right there. Everybody gonna hate you. You're just bigger than everybody else, and she is the okay. fuck and. I just love her. I know she messed around with some steroids before, but you know what? Who has it? I don't want to hear the Ronda Rousey thing. I, they all have. When you're mm-hmm. in that sport to that level, oh, they put in my protein shake. I didn't know what it was. Uh, Bitch, what that was. <laughs> Come on. The craziest steroid documentary of all time is the Lance Armstrong one. Oh, Jesus. When, Louise. when you watch that movie about how like they had like doctors putting it in at a certain time and putting blood back in, like I was like, Jesus Christ. Damn, did you watch that? No. They, 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 there's a part where they're like, oh my God, we're going to get tested. They pretend the bus was broken so they can put blood back in them. Like, it was fucking like, it was pure science. Wow. Like, they took cheating to, they were the champions of cheating. Of cheating. Huh? That's how Rock. good they were. Crazy. And look, he's a skinny little motherfucker. So he must have some really good shit, you know? I was <laughs> like, damn, how does he go up those mountains with that bike, you know? he's go- the, the guy was going up a mountain faster than he was going straight at one point. I was like, this doesn't even make sense. I knew he was cheating. I just didn't know. I was like, but he's too little to be on steroids. That was my mentality. I know. That's what I'm saying. There's all different. That's just it. There's all different kinds. And, you know, they they test you. I think you can't even have, uh, as far as MMA, because um, I manage some fighters and stuff. And I see the paperwork. They can't even have DH. E-A. You can't even take a DHEA, which is a supplement that you can get in GN- GNC. Yeah. You can just take that and they'll kick you out because of that. That's a, a steroid inhibitor. It's a, te- it's a testosterone inhibitor. Oh, okay. even for a girl that I managed a couple years ago, DHEA said you cannot have that in your system or we're going to piss you if you're there. It's considered a steroid. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. Well, isn't there like some cough medicine or cold medicine that people take? In the, in the Olympics, and they're like, ah, oh, it's a performance enhancing drug. And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? I'm, I'm sure that there is. And I'm sure that, yeah, I, I mean, you think they can do it on purpose? We're going to get somebody for doing this stupid shit. And I mean, who does a test anyway? I mean, wait, what are you looking for? I mean, just think everything is what we, we eat, you know, and, and all the medications, the Sudafed, and oh, yeah. everything's going to have something in there. It gets kind of crazy a little bit. So the, the only thing that I have a problem with is with the boys competing as girls with the sports and all that shit, all the transgender stuff. Mm. The steroids are one little mild thing, but then you have a dude competing like a chick and like killing all these girls. Let me tell you something. I only sparred guys and I was like 170 pounds and I was uh, 26 years old, strongest woman. I didn't win the toughest woman in the world. I'm really, really strong. I could only handle a guy that was 18 years old. That was my weight. Um, and he wasn't even pro yet or whatever. Anything over 18. If you're fighting a dude, it is a completely different story. So only I was matched up with an 18 year. We had the same strength, but I can look five or 10 years older. I sparred with guys and it's still a man hitting you in there, especially man, man. Man. There's no comparison mm. to men and women's strength. None. So, none. so that dude that turned into a girl like, and that dude that turned into a girl and is competing in the swimming. <laughs> so is that fair? Could we talked about no, this? It's, not fair. That's it's not cheating. Funny. It's so not fair. Thanks, he bad. Hey, I said it. It's not fair. I just think they should have their own league. That's all. Ye- you know. Give me, give me some. That's all I'm talking That's about. They should have their own league. It's not the PG league, right there. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, I suck in the men's division. I'm gonna turn myself into a woman and smash them in MMA. Like, come on, man. Like, mm-hmm. you're fighting one. You know, there was a, a guy, girl named Fallon Fox that was in there just killing these girls, and one of the girls got a concussion. I mean, I can tell you firsthand. There is no comparison to men and women strength. There's 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 none. Especially a guy that's competing at that level, or whatever. He's still a man, baby. But who the fuck thought this was a great idea? I didn't. <laughs> who the fuck said, you know what, man, this is gonna be great. Let's sell some fucking tickets here. Like I I'm, I can't wrap my head around it. Like somebody that's trying to support the the transgender community. Is it supporting or is it more of a ha ha, I, I I have this type of headline that's you know, people are gonna watch. Huh. Yeah, something like that too. But because the people get greedy. Don't even support that shit. They know what's up. They're just like, well, hey. Okay. And then so, as a girl, you're like, well, I'll give this a shot. And all of a sudden, your skull's cracked, and you <laughs> don't even know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. You know? Buddy is fucking cheering like he won the belt, and it's like you cheated, motherfucker. I don't understand this. Like, well, it's going to be short lived. You know what I mean? Because most girls are going to be like, yeah, the no, women I'm not going to do speak it. Up. That's you what know? it is. How can they feel good about it? How can these guys feel good? about it they they can't and if they're can in their gut of guts they can't there's a lot of pieces of shits out there people feel good about weird shit people weird 
Some people are, some people, you know what I mean, whatever, they, they can do some bad things and feel good about it. Me, deep down, it'd be, it's, I, I can't wrap my head around it. I'm reading these articles, and I'm like, what the hell is this? This is not even fair. Like, yeah. the swimmer was like 249th ranked, and he turned into a woman, and it was ranked first. You don't yeah. see something wrong with these numbers here? Like, That's almost like gladiators. This is like they're putting the girls against the guys or something like that. Like normal people don't do that shit. Okay, so yeah, let's just keep it boys and women, men, and TG section. I think why not? Why not? Right? You, you, you give them their own league. Them That's fine. Let's all give me a league. level. You know. You know I, I I mean, don't get me wrong. If they had their own league, I'm, I I want to see them compete. A hundred percent. There's nothing wrong with their you own know? league. It's just I find when you start mixing them up, it it, it, it becomes it just becomes not fair. You know what I mean? What well, is it's, gr- it's dangerous. If there's any contact involved, it is dangerous. A hundred percent. And that's exactly what I said. The swimming thing is it, it was like okay, that sucks. But you know what I mean? You start throwing MMA or boxing or something like that. You, you got to draw the line now when there's physicality yeah. towards each other. It's not cool at all. Yes. So yeah, that, we've mentioned that before. We're like, it's, it's cheating. It's what? I, I'm sorry. Like I don't know. But he he said that <laughs> what was the article? This the dude. Sw- I don't know. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. The dude girl swimmer. <laughs> he I mean, said he we said that he's the. Name. We don't even know his. After all that, we don't even know his name. He said that he's the Jackie Robinson of swimming. Wow. How do you feel Whoa, about that, no. man? Yeah. No. 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 no, no, no Jackie. No. No. no Fuck him. No, no, of course no. he's not the. No. How did he put himself in that category? That. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody yeah, want so everybody want to be part of a struggle. Everybody want to be part of a struggle. Hmm? Yeah, that's the problem. You they, know? they gave him his little line like it was just a story. I think you're right. I think somebody just wanted to get the story, get some promotion, and but now the the rush of this can't ever happen again is going to happen. Now they're going to get you know the the swimming board. I can't even believe that they let that shit happen. No, but neither. Maybe neither. Since it wasn't contact. Since it wasn't like a combative content. Maybe they thought that it was going to be okay. Maybe okay. they wanted to get his ass beat. Shannon. Maybe, be, maybe they want to see a woman whoop his ass, you know? I, I would love to watch that. Absolutely. But, Shannon, what well, you, that would be great. Yeah. you came in second because of this person. How do you feel? I take him down in the dressing room. Uh, <laughs> that's what you get. You call Tanga Harding and be like, how, how'd you take out that knee again? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Exactly. What crowbar was it? You know what I mean? Because, like, I would be like, if I came in second because of this dude decided to turn into a girl, I'd be fucking pissed. Like, okay, but then everybody in America knows that you really won the damn thing. If you're 100%. Like second, second to this dude, then you've got yeah. the top women's score. And, you Absolutely. Know, America is going if to- anyone with the right mind would know that that, that person's a champ. Absolutely. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't agree with you. And and I think you're right. I don't think he's going to last long. It's a fluke. The girls yeah. will be back year after year because they're the true athletes of the sport. I think mm-hmm. he's going to get so much bullshit and let me tell you that stress factor really, really adds up to an athlete. There's going to be so much of this. It does, that's probably what's going to be his demise. He's not going to do it again mm-hmm. because he's going to get so much negative and hate mail and hate bullshit. And I guarantee you, he don't have the balls literally for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's what was weighing him down in the men's division. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little light in the loafers there, but he don't have, I don't have, he don't have the balls to take. You know what everybody's going to say about him. That is the true measure of a true champion. Mm-hmm. You do have to be able to weather the storm and fight through all the bullshit. And he doesn't have a leg or balls to stand on. So boom, <laughs> boom. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Yeah, Sorry Jackie. Finish. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fake ass Jackie Robinson. Come mm-hmm. on, man. I'm like, so, sometimes I read these articles, I just get angry. I'm like, what, what the fuck are these people yeah. talking about? Crazy. That one bothered me. Shannon, what are you up to <clears> this weekend? Um, well, I got, I got gym tomorrow. What is, what is this weekend? Is it a holiday? We just had prom this last weekend on our birthday. So I think gonna it's going to be a chill weekend this weekend. So mm-hmm. I think I'm going to get on a boat somewhere and, and drink some margaritas and not do anything. <laughs> That's why I don't like talking like to people weekend. in Florida. They somehow make my weekend always look like shit. Well, well, I mean, they got the fun in the, they, they got the sun and the fun, man. They got the sun and the fun all the time. The weather's awesome. great. Come on down, guys. Shit. I, think, I think we have no choice. We have no choice. I will host you, and you can camp at my gym. So you don't have to pay for a hotel. You can sleep in here. All the Brazilians do. So <laughs> we'll clean it up. No, no, no. Wait, stop. Mm-mm. Oh no, I'm, I have to say no. I don't want to be camping with him at no fucking gym because all he's gonna do is make me fucking work out. You understand? You know? Get up. <laughs> fucking lift this weight. Get on the treadmill, you fat fuck. Blah blah blah. I, I can hear it now. Fat fuck a day in my life. That's rude. Wrestling mats. Y'all would be wrestling. So you'd be wrestling or hitting some heavy bags. 
Yeah, Go some, ahead, put any boxing. Some, you know, he likes to work out, and he's always, you need to work out. You, you know, you need to work out. I, I, we never did any boxing, but I, I've been in too many fights. So Y'all don't throw hands? You guys don't work out in heavy bags or anything? Never not around. I had a heavy bag when I was younger. Between me and my pops, we tore that shit apart. No, we Boom. never end up getting. Oh wait, I got I got something for you here. Check this. Let me see if you can. Yeah, see. yeah, yeah. Hold on one second. Can you see that speed bag? Let me see if you can see it up there. Look at that! Look at that! Can you see this? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay, yes. Boom, 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 boom. Look. Come on down, baby. How the do, fuck do you see? do that? I've tried that you know? once in my life. Was crushed. My ego was crushed. <laughs> you see? You see? And I rewatched Rocky. It didn't work. It's fast every day. So, see, I was thinking my head was there. You'd have knocked me out like five <laughs> times. You know, boom, bang, 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 boom. Like a baby. Okay. Yeah, well, that's that's fine. I'll be a baby. I don't care. Definitely, you know? definitely, Shannon. We're definitely coming by to check you out. Um, yeah, for sure. We're coming down. We're coming we got, down. we got to, we got to drink some tequila. Let's yeah. go. And we'll talk some behind the scenes stories that people wish that was on this show, but screw you. You get it for free on YouTube. This is all you get for now. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, is, let's yeah, make some new stories. Let's make some ah, new stories. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Okay, that's what I'm talking okay. about. Shannon, thank you so much. A big fan. Thank you. I'm happy you got back to me. I'm happy to have you on on a Friday night. You know, you, you could have been doing something else, but you hung out with us instead. And we're yeah, I'm doing y'all. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> we're I know. So you Shannon, I a.k.a. I've seen these before. Come on now. This ain't the first time. You know, that, that's but let Shannon, me know. Like, that's anything, Shannon, a.k.a. Anything you know? that you have coming up and you need help promoting, don't forget, man. You've been a part of the show. You're a part of our family now, and we'd that's be right. more than happy to share anything that you have. So That's right. Shannon, a.k.a. Brazilian Beatdown. Hey, oh, yeah. it's yeah. right. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. yeah, now my friend Shannon's gonna come fuck you up. You know, you got that, guys? All right. Yeah. I'll come up to New York. I'll be there two and a half hours. I'm playing. I, I see. I'm in Canada though, too, as well. Yeah, we 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 we. Oh. I, I'm on. I'm in Nova Scotia. I'm on uh, the East Coast, above Maine. Oh, I'm right. up there. Yeah. You guys are way up there. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But still representing New York, I hear it. Of course, of course. Like yeah, still... We don't really want them that bad, you know. You guys, you know, still got got to represent home, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm. The, I told them we need to go down, you know. I'll come down and warm up. We'll, we'll, we'll warm you up down here. Get you some sun and fun and have Boom. a hundred percent. Boom. Come on, stay on. But every stay on. I'm just gonna play the outro. Everybody, thanks for listening. We're out. Peace. Bye.